Hello and welcome to this video review of the 80 watt mini moving head. So in the box you have an IEC cable, you've got yourself a bracket, two little screws to attach to the bottom that's great for hanging off a clamp, XYZ you know the drill. Instruction manual full of gobbledygook and terrible English but generally gives a bit of an overview in terms of DMX channels which is quite useful. Underneath the polystyrene we have the light itself. Now, disclaimer, this isn't how it originally came. I actually keep my lights in a bag. I've just sort of reassembled the box as best as I can remember what came with it. Now, what do we say to cables that come with cheap Chinese lights? Not today. But on a more serious note, genuinely check that the cables that come with whatever lights you are, they are generic fixtures. They may not be up to British standards or whatever standard country you are in. Check for fuses, make sure they are safe. If in doubt, chuck them in the bin. So the fixtures themselves have got that lovely generic Chinese menu. You've got your four buttons on there. They all work fine, nice and clear, fairly sturdy. Uh, this nick here, that's my fault. I've actually already dropped this light and it still works. So that's good on the bill quality. Got a lovely matte sort of finish to them, which is quite nice. And then you've got your manual adjustment for the focus. And once again, usual gubbins on the back. You've got your cooling fan, Power in, DMX in and out. Unfortunately, like most Chinese units, there's no on-off switch, which is really annoying and it bugs me a lot. Fan on the back of the unit for keeping the LED cool. And then moving to the underneath, you've got your mounting points for uh, the bracket thing. And then it does actually originally come with four feet, but I've taken them off because I mount my lights on top of poles with scrims. Right, let's plug it in and see what happens. So immediately it starts calibrating calibrating that's the word seeing where the motors are trying to work out what is going on and look at that nice and quick it's fairly quiet not the quietest it does make some strange noises sometimes so this light like most lights has the generic sort of menu system so you've got your DMX address which is changed by pressing enter and the up and downs you've got this which I don't actually know what this one is ah, this is channel mode so you can choose between 11 and 9 channel DMX control mode uh, I have it on 9, don't need the full 11. Uh, this one here, I think this sets the slave or master function. So you've got slave 1, slave 2 and master where it sort of sets up its own shows. Next one here, you've got this one, which I have, I have no idea what this does. If anybody finds out, please do let me know. And then the next one is sound, whether you want it to be sound active or not. I don't sensitivity of the sound. And then this one here is, I don't know what this stands for. Um, but if you select it, the light starts doing a slow show, then a sound active show, and then automatic, and then black for blackout, I assume. So uh, what I'll do is I'll stick this, there's your reverse pans, reverse tilts, reset, and back to address. I'll stick this back in DMX mode, I'll get my DMX controller, and uh, we'll have a bit of fun and see what it can do. Right, so I've got the lights hooked up via my DMX Go. I've had to build a separate profile for it. Uh, there's no pre-built one. So uh, this is the light with a little bit of fog, uh, just about enough fog to set off our home fire alarm. Uh, as you can see, it's ready to be addressed. So, unfortunately, I can't show you the uh, individual channels here. But as you can see, the light is responsive, it's smooth, it's quick. Now, even when you slow the beam right down, you can see it is still nice and smooth. There's no jitteriness. I mean, the motors aren't absolutely amazing. When you look at the gobos on the floor, there is a little bit of a jitter, but overall, really impressive. So let's quickly go through the channel. So the first channel, this, like I say, this is in nine channel mode. First channel is pan. So if we just adjust that, there you go. we've got the full 540 degree pan there. Let's reset that. Second channel is tilt, so I'll do the same. And see, just about over 180 degrees of tilt. I'll just point that up at the ceiling then. Next channel, colour wheel. So, like I mentioned, it's not got a continuous colour wheel. Now, but when you set the colours off, the colours on this light are really quite nice. A uh, bit of a strange colour wheel arrangement, as in it doesn't do a full... 360 degree rotation it's sort of a crescent moon arrangement so it does sort of scroll back and forth as you can see though really nice vibrant colors so i'll just sort of try and pan through the color wheel just to give you an idea of what it can do so as you start moving up through the uh, 
the addresses there you can see start getting split and as you start moving a little bit further on kind of just starts doing its own thing through its colour chasers and uh, it's slow to fast I believe but just check the manual so moving on to the gobos on the fixture they're fairly crisp so the first one is like a sun next one's kind of a rosy thing and swirl your sort of usual generics uh, but you know the there's quite a few sort of beam breakers which are quite nice. Little star. And then you've got the uh, Gobo scroll. So I've just got that set to one speed on my controller. And you can see it just creates a nice little beam breaker. And then really that's your lot when it comes to features. Um, quite a narrow beam angle, as to be expected from a spot. Um, but I found it to be perfectly apt. So uh, what I'll do, I shall uh, pump out a bit more fog and we'll stick it in auto and uh, let the light speak for itself. Now what I'm going to do, uh, I don't have anything sort of comparable really, um, apart from some 15 watt mini moving heads. So I'll stick one of them on and then you can see what the difference is. And I'll leave that running at the same time and you'll be able to tell easily what the difference is. So really that kind of summarises my little overview of these little lights. Um, very impressed with them so far for the budget. Um, I think they, I mean, they're, they're argued at 60 watts. Um, and I think they probably do, do kind of meet that. I've got two 25 watt scanners and these are probably over twice as bright. Uh, I'll put some uh, clips at the end of this video to show them in a live venue situation. I wanted to use these out on the road first before I started uh, giving a little review. But so far I've been very impressed. Um, the control's great, they offer plenty of features for the money, what you'd expect. Uh, and I think really, well, time will tell, but so far, I'm impressed. So, uh, I'll put a link in the description of the one I bought, um, but like I said, these are generic Chinese moving heads, so you kind of know you're going to get something similar depending what you buy, but it might be slightly different. So if you've got any questions, stick them in the comments below, I'll do my best to answer them.